industry has made great strides in safety performance over the last 50 years. Technology has become safer to use, and techniques such as hazard and bow tie analysis have given us ways to think about and manage hazards. This approach has served industry well, but in recent years safety performance has stalled. What more can we do to achieve the next step change in safety performance? One problem is that, when we define safety as a lack of incidents, a lack of incidents also means a lack of data. Incidents can appear to be random, 10 serious incidents this year, 3 last year, and who knows how many next year. Even if we have perfect procedures, perfect equipment, and perfect training, the workplace is always changing. The reality that workers face can be very different from what was originally planned. This leads to a difference between work as imagined and work as done, or in other words, variation in performance. To illustrate this, imagine a lifting job. The task is to lift an I-beam up to a structure and fit it into a slot. Sometimes, the space is big enough. Sometimes it is too small and workers find that they may have to force the beam in by pushing it. This could make the beam swing uncontrollably. And potentially, it could even fall from the slings. For nine of the I-beams, this approach could work without incident. But on the tenth occasion, the I-beam falls. We would have nine good outcomes and one bad outcome. Yet, the same variation in performance, the difference between work as imagined and work as done, was present, regardless of outcome. Instead of simply measuring the outcome, Modern approaches to safety are increasingly focusing on measuring and learning from these variations in normal work directly. This approach has been taken in the rail industry to address signals passed at danger. When the next section of track is not clear, a train driver must stop before passing a red signal or risk colliding with another train further up the line. When a train passes a red signal, this is called a SPAD. A train operator wanted to know if there were clear differences between drivers that passed red signals and those that didn't. To do this, they decided to measure the stopping distance of each train after encountering a red signal. They expected to see a clear difference in stopping distances between the times when things went right and times when spads occurred. They didn't. There was no clear difference in the behavior of drivers. Instead, they saw a wide variation in stopping distances, a normal distribution curve. On occasion, the stopping distances were greater than is allowable, and a spad occurred. It was concluded that, rather than being exceptional events, spads were simply a result of having such a wide variation in braking distances, and therefore were expected to occur under the current operating conditions. The wide variation in braking distances was caused by several factors. Drivers were encouraged not to slow down unnecessarily in order to save on electricity and fuel costs. Drivers would delay braking as long as possible, because they expected the signal to change to green, but they had no way of knowing this. By providing train drivers with information about the status of signals further up the line, Drivers were better able to predict whether a signal would change to green or not, and so adjusted their behavior accordingly. The result was that braking distances became more uniform, resulting in less spads. So what can we learn from this? There will always be a difference between work as imagined and work as done, and there will always be performance variability. This is normal, and even vital for organizations to be flexible and adaptable. When incidents do happen, these may be exceptional outcomes, but not exceptional events. It is unhelpful to blame someone or put these down to bad luck. While our systems can cope with variation up to a point, the difference between a safe outcome and a dangerous one is closer than we think. By ignoring normal work, we ignore 99% of the data. If we move away from thinking about safety as a binary outcome, 
and instead find ways to directly measure variation in performance before incidents happen. We will be able to predict where incidents are likely to occur. These will be the areas of work where our people and processes experience wide variations in performance beyond which our systems can cope with. This is true whether our process is driving trains or creating fuels and generating energy. Begin by looking at your performance indicators for safety critical activities. Are they only measuring the outcome? What do they tell you about the variation in performance that leads to that outcome? For example, instead of measuring whether routine maintenance is completed to schedule, you could try to measure how many days before or after the schedule maintenance is completed. What might this tell you about how organized, or well-resourced, the maintenance program is? Instead of measuring how often operating temperature levels exceed a certain threshold, you could try to measure the variation in temperature relative to that threshold. How close to the edge are you operating? Lastly, if leaders recognize and start talking about variation between work as imagined and work as done, this may help workers recognize this variation in their own work before the job starts and better prepare them to stop and replan. If we can begin to find ways to measure meaningful variations in performance in our safety critical tasks and activities, then we can complement and enhance our existing approaches to managing safety. By doing so, this will allow us to learn not just from when things go wrong, but all the time.